there's a post on Kubrat Pulev's personal Facebook page in which he says that he will not be ready to fight Anthony Joshua in late October, early November, and that he needs, I think he said something like four or five months to prepare for the fight and train. In the post, he also says that the relationship that he has with his promoter, Sauerland, is not particularly good, and that they're the ones arranging the fight without letting him know exactly when the fight's supposed to be taking place. This is what he's saying. Now, the post is in Bulgarian, but if you use the translate button on the post, you can get, eh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how accurate it is because I can't read Bulgarian, but you can understand basically what he's saying in the post. So I will drop a link in the comment section below, right? I'll pin it so you can all see it. Go click that link. Go have a read of the post. Pulev saying he won't be ready to face Joshua. Now, some people who have seen this post are saying, well, Joshua's going to fight Ortiz then. The Pulev fight is off. That's possible, but Sauerland, Pulev's promoters, are going to try, I would imagine, everything in their power to make sure that Kubrat Pulev gets in the ring against Anthony Joshua this year. That's what they're going to try and do, I would imagine. So they might threaten him with something legally whereby he has to go ahead and take the fight. Uh, as I say, in October when Anthony Joshua wants it. Now, this is not the first time that Kubrat Pulev has delayed an Anthony Joshua fight. Last year, Anthony Joshua tried to fight Kubrat Pulev several times. And each time, Pulev kept saying, I need more time to train, I need another fight, so on and so forth. There was even a a video on YouTube, which you can go watch. Just go type it in on YouTube. Type in Eddie Hearn, Kubrat Pulev. You'll see a video come up of Eddie Hearn at some event in Germany. I think it might have been when Paul Smith fought Arthur Abraham, maybe. And Kubrat Pulev was there. Eddie Hearn confronts Pulev face to face and says, when are you going to fight Joshua? Don't you want to fight Joshua? We're, re we're ready to pay you some money, whatever, whatever. And again, Pulev just kind of laughs it off and leaves with his crew. So he don't seem overly keen to get in the ring with Anthony Joshua. Some people are speculating that perhaps Pulev is cycling off PEDs. And that's why he needs this long, long amount of notice before he gets in the ring. But I tend to suspect that he's not cycling off PEDs. I tend to suspect that his first crack at a world heavyweight title against Vladimir Klitschko ended in disaster for him. And this is a guy who had the weight of expectation of his whole country on his shoulders. I think that loss actually traumatized him psychologically. It humiliated him. And he don't want to go through something like that again the next time he challenges for the world heavyweight title. So I think those doubts are in his mind when he thinks about the Joshua fight. He don't want to end up sprawled all over the canvas like he was against Klitschko. He was very humiliating. Pulev is a very proud man you know that's what i've observed of him since i've been watching him as a professional he's a very very proud guy he's a macho guy and i guess he likes people to see him in that light so to get humiliated the way he did against klitschko i think it really scarred him mentally and yeah that's what that's my belief as, as why he don't want to go through with the joshua fight so if this fight don't happen then uh, perhaps Pulev will be stripped of his mandatory status, I don't know. Or perhaps Joshua will fight Luis Ortiz. You know, basically Joshua has to fight Luis Ortiz if the Pulev fight don't happen this year. He has to. Because they can't delay, because let's say they delay the Pulev fight. Yeah, and Pulev is allowed to stay mandatory challenger. They can't delay the fight uh, against Pulev. You know, they might delay it until early 2018, for example. Right, So that's going to leave a spot for him to face his WBA mandatory this year. I don't see any way that the WBA wouldn't try and enforce a Luis Ortiz on Anthony Joshua this year if the pull-up fight ain't going to happen until next year. I don't see any way. Uh, the only way, in fact, well, the only possible way is if the IBF come up with a different mandatory other than pull for this year. But other than that, 
the WBA, I'm sure, will enforce a Joshua Ortiz. So, let me know how you feel about the situation, people. As I say, have a read of the post by Kubrat Pulev on his Facebook page. And let me know what you think of it. What do you think his reasons are, his real reasons are, for not going ahead with a Joshua fight? There could be another reason, which I haven't covered here. Maybe it's money. Maybe his financial situation with the Sourlands is not what he believes it should be. And because of that, he's thinking, you know what, I can't go into this biggest payday of my life without getting, without being in a, a, a situation contractually and financially where I'm satisfied because I need to maximize my earnings from this fight because these opportunities don't come along very often in a fighter's career to earn this kind of money. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section, people. It's happening. I'm out.